So we're about days away for the retirement of Sting. So I want to talk about Sting because I absolutely love Sting. But before we do kick off, I do need to shout out to people. Thank you very much for Gorilla Mind. You go to GorillaMind.com for us. Simon, you just get time to get 10% off. They are not only a fitness company that I use to get my supplements. Yes, I am affiliated with them. To be completely honest, they've started sponsoring my videos a little bit as well. I usually talk about them at the end of the video, but now they get to the start. And also, as I am pimping things, make sure you go to ProWrestlingTees.com for us. Simon and buy yourself a stupid Simon Miller Wrestling t-shirt. Did I wear this to the ring? in my progress wrestling match the other day? Yes, I did. And did I probably annoy a few people? <laughs> you bet your ass. But enough about my stupid bald adventures. And indeed, let's talk about one Steve Borden, better known as Sting. I really love the stuff we did on Dynamite last night. If you didn't see it, he came down from the rafters. And that is just nostalgia 101. Because of course, when he was feuding with the NWO in the late 90s, like 1997, he would do this all of the time. And whatever he did create then has somehow stood the test of time here we are what 20 years 30 years later and it's still just so cool now look sting is 65 years old and i'm sure the face paint helps but it's also the character it's also the way he holds himself it's also the little things that he does to make sure he stays in the persona he is just cool i don't care you can call me a nerd you can call me a geek i'm aware of all of these things so he did come down and you know just stared at the young bucks and they sold it like oh no we're gonna get stung by sting and he did smash them up and give them scorpion death drops i was just having the best time and sure i totally get it it's gonna mean more to me because i was but a fetus then but i was watching this stuff on television but i like to think that because aew has done such a good job in treating him like a legend that we have now created a brand new blueprint for what legend treatment should be and and even if you weren't aware of Sting, maybe you've gone and checked him out. Maybe you've done some reading or maybe you just like this incarnation of him. And I think that could be completely cool because, again, he still does resonate throughout the screen. That's right. I'm bringing out my big words today. People tell me I have no vocabulary in the comments. Oh, Simon, you talk like such an idiot. Well aware of this. I've been with me for the last 36 years, but that's not the point. I just he just stumbled across something. Right. And it's another one of these characters that maybe could only have this kind of impression in pro wrestling. And the fact that he has made it all the way to 65 and is still having pretty damn good matches and still doing crazy risks. Let's not forget this. He's almost taken the Terry Funk route, although Terry Funk embraced it way earlier. But Sting wasn't renowned for this kind of wrestling at any point throughout his career. Then he turned up in AEW. He looked at all these young guys and he was like, right, I need to keep up with them somehow. I know I will be totally, totally crazy. I just think he's a hero and I just think he's one of the best ever. And come Sunday night, I'm probably going to have a tear in my eye. There's nothing wrong with that we have tears for a reason but of course it does bring us to the ultimate question which is probably what this video is going to be titled and i really would like your impressions in the comments your answers in the comments much better again than people going simon learn some new words what do you think we should do because sting is such an old school kind of a guy you have to imagine that he's happy to lose for lack of a better term right he's probably pitched that a thousand times that the rumor was that he didn't even want to win the tag team belts but everyone's like man you're sting and you won like 27 matches in a row i think it's 28 now you should probably do this and i agree because it was a lovely moment so if you have the real life again steve borden saying he wants to lose because he thinks that will do the wonders for the young bucks which it would do by the way if the young bucks in these brand new hill personas which i'm enjoying massive are the people who <laughs> end sting's career and take his titles they are going to be able to ride that wave if we do it right for a long ass time they are going to have mega heat but at the same time we're going to the greenborough coliseum we've sold over sixteen thousand tickets it is absolutely going to be one of the biggest events of the year people have totally forgotten what sixteen thousand tickets actually means and the majority of individuals in that building are going to be there for sting so while i understand the story and understand the future and i understand you always want to be putting things in place for next week next month next year sometimes you do have to look at the here and now and i'm not 100 percent sure i like the idea and it could still be done really well of course and make me go oh my gosh i can't believe it but of the thing ending a revolution ending and sting has been beaten and you've got all this sadness no one's got a warm and fuzzy feeling in their tum tum i don't know man i think maybe that could be me being too sentimental maybe it doesn't actually matter because it is a tag team match and it's on tornado tag team match of darby allen could take the pin and then technically sting hasn't lost and of course you could have it where he does lose the tag team titles but afterwards he whoops everybody's ass he does a scorpion death drop he does a death lock he hits people with the baseball bat and who knows what else and that's when the screen fades to black so there are plenty of ideas here but i just like the idea of it being a celebration of sting 
an homage to Sting, a gift to Sting, a present to Sting, whatever the words you want to use. So when we do walk away, and when you do want to go back and watch AEW Revolution in 2037, because you want to see Sting's last match, it is all just about Sting. So he whips some people's ass. He does all of his moves. He's probably going to do at least one crazy spot. Don't know what Darby Allen's going to do. He did an interview and he's like, if I have to sacrifice myself, I will sacrifice myself. Like, it's not the, what the flip? It's not Superman, dude. You need, to, you need to dial it back a bit. Although fair play to him for understanding the gravitas of this. But I do think it will probably divide opinion because if Sting does win, there will be a contingent of people that will be like, oh, classic old wrestler guy not, not doing whatever the right word would be. And look, Sting hasn't lost once <laughs> since he's been in AEW, which I'm sure is a Tony Khan call. But this is why there is just something about this guy. Because again, his win re loss record is completely unblemished. But I don't feel like he's buried anybody. I don't feel like he hasn't put anybody else over. I don't think other people haven't benefited because they've been in those matches. If anything, I think every single person has benefited somehow. So yeah, I think in any kind of company you are in, if you do have somebody like this come through the doors and you're not entirely sure what to do, you just say, we do Sting. We do what we did with Sting in AEW and we just rinse and repeat that for the next 50 years until everybody is entirely bored of it. But if somebody was going to push me for an answer, I think I want Sting to win and Darby Allen too. But again, I just think the whole highlight the whole spotlight should be on Sting. His family should be there. Because, of course, don't forget the Young Bucks did bludgeon them. So they probably need a little bit of um, retribution too. But seeing that final shot of Sting with a tag team belt over his shoulder, with his friends, with his family, probably some famous faces too. Lex Luger did an interview when he went round the houses with this answer. It's a bit like a riddle. But it certainly sounded like he was going to be there. And I'm sure Sting would love to have a moment with him because, of course, they've got an incredible, incredible past together. But I think that's what I would rather happen. And don't forget, he's not vanishing he hasn't said <laughs> i'm vanishing from the world he's not blasting off to the moon he's just retiring from an in-ring active performer so you may see him on the next dynamite you may see him on the next collision or whatever it will be so he probably should take some time away just to make sure you keep that star aura going but he could absolutely come out on wednesday he could do it after the damn pay-per-view itself and say obviously i'm giving up my belt so amazing to retire as a champion but now you know, it's going to go on to someone else. And you could probably do a tag team tournament. I mean, AEW loves doing tournaments, so, so why the flub not? And the Young Bucks can win that, and you can put everybody in it. There are a few teams at the moment that probably do need a fire lit under their ass. The Acclaim would be one of them. I would stop the Bang Bangs as a gang. As much as I enjoy it, I just think there's... I don't think it's a situation where they're greater than the sum of their parts. Is that right? It's the other way around. I actually think they were better as single entities. But then you can put the guns in there, and Top Flight, and Undisputed Kingdom could go for it. But they're still the Ring of Honor tag team champions. Are they? Maybe. I don't know. No, that's something we need to talk about. But again, I don't want to get too way late here. But it should also be the main event as far as I'm concerned. That was the other back and forth people had. There is no point in having Sting's last match and then out comes Hangman, Adam Page, Swerve, Strickland, and Samoa Joe. Of course, the world title should always be the most important entity that you have in any promotion. And these three guys right now are bringing some top-level work. I think Swerve Strickland should be the champion at some point. If Samoa Joe's reign can continue, that's good too. And Hangman, Adam Page absolutely needs another run as well. But it's just going to... It just won't be the same. It's going to pale in comparison. Putting yourself in a position to fail. It's like when Hogan Rock did their thing at WrestleMania 18. It's the Shawn Michaels Undertaker matches and I'm sure a bunch of other ones I can't think of right now. All you're going to do is within the context of the evening mean people do not care as much about the world championship as they should do just because we all care about sting whereas if you do the world championship beforehand or even maybe open with the thing to do something crazy different there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever that's just ultimately going to put the right like i say spotlight on the correct people this is sting's last match to the point i could probably argue you're either buying the pay-per-view because you want to see sting's last match or you're not buying it because you don't care about sting's last match right as a quick aside too just because I get into these stupid conversations with people on the internet, which is my fault. What the hell am I doing? But no, I don't care that there wasn't a full arena last night. I mean, in a dream world, do I want, you know, 10,000 people to be going crazy for Sting? Of course I do. Who deserves it more? Absolutely nobody. But it doesn't take away my moment from it. And that's how I watch wrestling. I watch it very selfishly. I don't care about how many people are going to the shows. I don't care about ratings. I don't care about attendances. I don't care about pay-per-view rights. I'm interested by them and I'm intrigued by them, but I don't care about them. I want WWE to do well, AEW to do well, Ring of Honor, New Japan, Impact, wherever it may be. I just want wrestling to flourish. So if they do, I mean, yes, AEW at the moment probably do need to sell more ticket sales from the growth point of view. But I don't sit here going, aha, because I just, think, I think it's crazy. Okay. I think it's totally crazy. And if that makes me hate you other way around, you hate me, then I will totally understand that as well. Just going through the rest of the card off the top of my head as well. Very sad the Meat Madness match isn't happened. I mean, this is a little bit strange, a bit two plus two equals potato t-shirt also on pro wrestling team. Only because Tony Khan said we can't do the match 
because there are some injuries, but all three guys, Lance Archer, Wardlow, and Powerhouse Hobbs, are in the brand new All-Star Scramble. But that's actually a good thing because I remember seeing Meat Madness and going, we need more than three people. Where's the other people? So I suppose if there was meant to be one or two extra people, they are the injured guys, hence why we're not seeing them here. But the All-Star Scramble is a bit weird too. The winner, <laughs> from nowhere, gets an AEW World title match. So Wardlow is in it. I would presume it would be him, but then Chris Jericho's in it too. Small spoiler, they do get into it on Collision. So... It's going to be an interesting weekend too. Tony Storm versus John Pratt. So I think it's going to be a really good match. I've enjoyed this build. I think the timeless character is absolutely wonderful and she should win, of course. And I think on the way to All In, which is in August, it should probably be Mercedes Monet versus Tony Storm. I think people would enjoy that. We'll also get Orange Cassidy versus Roderick Strong. I think Orange Cassidy will lose here. And I think it's probably going to tie into a destruction of the best friends as well. But the Undisputed Kingdom needs some gold right now. They are another group that's kind of lost their direction. And you don't want them to lose here because they will be, they'll be struggling, I think. Not in a bad way. It wasn't their fault but Adam Cole and MGF getting injured just came at the worst possible time. But yeah, you need to give Roderick Strong the TNT title and then we need to make it, so the international title, and then we need to make it a workhorse championship again. Defend it all the time, get him on TV as a great wrestler. And talking of the TNT title, I would give it to Daniel Garcia too because you have the ultimate sports entertainment finish. And I know you'll roll your eyes, but sometimes you've got to do what makes sense. Adam Copeland comes out, he screws over Christian Cage. That allows Daniel Garcia to win and then we can go on and do the Adam Copeland Christian match. And there doesn't have to be a championship on the line, which is probably for the best. I've loved Christian holding this title, and I think he's one of the best performers going right now in wrestling. But Adam Copeland doesn't need to hold that title more than the 60 seconds that he did at that last pay-per-view, right? I don't think it adds anything. Giving it to Daniel Garcia right now, who's on an incredible tear. He had so much momentum in 2024, I think we'll hopefully underline that, and then we can repackage him, and not repackage him, but then we can make sure we keep going in the right direction, which is what we are doing. And when it comes to the World Championship match, man, I have no flubbing idea. I am going to go for Sting and Darby Allen before I do forget. Because it's a three way i'm going to imagine that samoa joe pings hangman adam page it's just not the right time to take the belt out of samoa joe hangman doesn't need to win it right now and swerve does but you can probably wait till double or nothing so if you do have that in mind and we're dealing with injuries you can probably just take a little bit. We're also getting Eddie Kingston versus Daniel Bryan or Brian Danielson. I think Eddie Kingston has to win that, especially given what happened on Dynamite, but that will rule. And we're getting Will Ospreay versus Takeshita. Now, a small part of me, this part right here, why the AEW may pull a fast one here and have Takeshita win, and he should win because he shouldn't be losing. But ultimately, Will Ospreay should probably be propping that company up come the summer, face the company kind of deal. But we've got to build him in the right way. So you've got to give it to Ospreay. And we're also getting FTR versus the BCC round two. That's going to be flubbing great. I'm going to give it to the Backball Combat Club for no reason whatsoever. Also, just as I did get it up to make sure I hadn't missed anything, the all-star match at the moment is Jericho, Wardlow, Powerhouse Hobbs, Lance Archer, Hook, Brian Cage, Magnus, and Dante Martin. So, yeah, I mean, that should be an interesting thing. And Magnus is the CMLL guy, which actually may not happen because there's some problem with visas and CMLL guys at the moment. So hopefully they can get them sorted. But ultimately, if you are an old nerd like me, make sure you enjoy this weekend as much as possible. Obviously, Sting's last ever match. I don't think he's going to be one of these wrestlers that decides to come out of retirement again i think it'll be on tv but i don't think you'll ever see him wrestle again and it has been one of the all-time legendary careers and he also seems like a really nice dude to boot which i think adds an extra something something to it as well so he'll never see this video but all the love and all the power to sting what a wonderful human being all around I'm very, very excited and emotional to see what we're going to do. Now, please do like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Click that bell, ding, ding, the notification bell. Click the video on the screen as well. We talked about Grilla Mind. We'll talk about Patreon.com for the Simon316. Simon316 Simon on social media. Simon J. Miller on TikTok. Simon Miller on Cameo. And a bunch of other things, including my T-shirts. I like to zoom through these because I see the audience retention, and it's important. But at the same time, we must talk about it. Ultimately, just interact with this video as much as possible. Enjoy the pay-per-view, my friends. See you soon.